Hello Giants, our old friend. The Philadelphia Eagles divisional round home playoff game is set. The number six seeded New York Giants are going to come into the link to play that number one seed Philadelphia Eagles. There are some mixed emotions amongst our fan base about whether or not this is a good matchup. I want to break this down by the numbers and talk about it a little bit. Let's get into it. Giants, Eagles, next Saturday. All right, y'all, let's talk. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. If you're new, channel will be the first, second, third time. You caught my content and you enjoyed today's discussion. We're on a journey. We're on a path. Just crossed us over 6,900 subscribers. We're heading towards 7,500 subscribers. I would love for you to be a part of that equation and join the Cerebral Football community. I just need you to hit that subscribe button to do that. OG subscribers, hat in hand, here to ask you that favor, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Help me smash the like button and spike the algorithm to get this in front of new folks that we can potentially convert to our little audience here on the YouTube all right, y'all, today's topic. Going through Twitter, I saw a, I saw a tweet. And, and I'm not trying to throw shade at this young man because I can certainly understand why someone might feel the way that this tweet, you know, is expressing the emotions behind this tweet. To which in this person's, you know, their opinion, this is just an opinion, they felt like, man, out of all the matchups for the divisional round weekend, they really didn't want to play the Giants. And I got to be honest, I disagree with that. I mean, out of the teams that were in the playoffs, this is the team I want to play because it is the most limited team. But I will say this. The Giants are on the rise. So I can certainly understand why this person says, like, you know, if you can avoid that team that's rising, you want to avoid them. But what I want to point out is some just overarching themes about Philly, New York, and why, to me, this is like, this is the ideal matchup if you want it. So... Let's get into some of the behind-the-number type deal here and why this is a really good matchup, in my opinion. First point, the all-time series between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. It is in the Eagles' favor, 91-87-1, to and, one, and that is a recent trend that has bucked into Philly's favor because if we were talking about this 10 years ago, this would have been in the Giants' trend. This would have been in the Giants' favor, if you will. And that brings me to my next point. Since 2010, so over the decade that was before us and into this current decade, what is the Eagles' record versus the Giants? Guys, we are 20 and 6. Out of 26 games, we have won 20 of them versus the Giants since 2010. Man, we have absolutely handled this team in the past 12, 13 years. In addition to that, if you go over the last 10 games, we are 8 and 2 against this football team. And I know you can say, well, like Steve, that does include like the last game of, of 2010 where we lost that game and then carried forward into the 2021 season, we lost, you know, the first game against the Giants. So those two losses are somewhat recent. I hear you. We're still late in two, guys, over the last 10 games versus this team. And it may, you know, kind of like speed this up a little bit to talk about the way that the Giants ended the last 10 games of the 2022 season, this current season. Guys, they went 3-6-1. and one. Those losses included you know, against teams like the Lions, the Seahawks, the Cowboys, the Eagles twice, and they lost to the Vikes. There's a lot of, like, playoff teams around or teams hunting in the playoffs, so better competition absolutely beat the Giants. But to be fair, they did turn around. They won a huge – they tied Washington the first time. They turned around and won a huge game versus Washington, who was in the hunt, and then turned around and beat Minnesota just yesterday. So, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I mean, in one hand, this is a very, very well-coached football team. On the other hand, it ain't playing that well down the stretch, guys. It is 2-4-1 over its last seven games in 22, and then it's 3-6-1 over its last 10 games in 22 down the stretch. And I'll say this, just pulling out a little further. How many times have the Giants scored 30-plus points in their last 10 games of the, of the regular season? They're one, one of nine, guys, only one game. Now, you can say, well, they just did score 30, Steve, to be fair. And that's true. And that's against a horrible Vikings defense, by the way. How many times have they scored 24 points over the last 10 games in the regular season? Three. Three out of 10 attempts, so three and seven in that. This is not a, a potent offense we're going to have to go face. It is a, you know, an offense that does what it does, and it does it well. They can run the football well. Daniel Jones, I do believe, is ascending. I will give... Daniel Jones props because I think Daniel Jones has handled this situation in New York with a lack of skill position players quite well, if I'm being honest. I think he has done a tremendous job 
to not only get them in the playoffs, but to win a playoff game. Even though Minnesota was limping down the stretch, they lost two of their last three. And they lost it in division, which was made me a little worrisome because they got dropped hard by Green Bay. And they got dropped by Detroit, too, two of their last three games before finally basically taking advantage of the Bears to kind of clinch. I know you say, Steve, we've lost two out of three, too. Let's, let's, let's keep it real. But we beat the Giants twice, and, and we are particularly good against the Giants. And I'll also add this in. If you look at points that they've given up, they're tied 17th you know, on the season. So just below the halfway mark. Okay, They're tied for 17th. They've given up 371 points on the season. But when you look at point differential, guys, they're ranked 16th dead middle of the pack at negative 6. We're the third best point differential football team. They are the 16th. They're in the middle of the pack. To me, when you pull back and you look at all the numbers, this is a very favorable matchup. But I want to transcend this, and I want to talk about getting into the particulars of their defense and what this Philadelphia Eagles team can or cannot do versus them. So without further ado, guys, let's get into some of the uh, more specific numbers of, of looking at this team. We talked about points, and I said that they are the 17th ranked defense in terms of points allowed, 371. I said their point differential puts them 16th at negative 6. Their total DVA, though, guys, they have feasted upon bad competition. When they played better competition, they have gotten taken advantage of. Their total DVA, DVOA, is 29th, guys, at 10.2%. There you go, 29th. That is the bottom of the bottom. And I will tell you that uh, I'm a little skeptical of what this defense can do. Now, if you go into their third down defense, it's, it's a little bit of a back and forth. So third down and fourth down overall, just overall DVOA rankings there. They're 18th at negative 0.7%. 18th. So a little bit past the top half of the league, if you will. On third and long, they're 19th overall in terms of DVO with a negative 10.8%. In the mid area, so mid area, probably somewhere around six to, eight, you know, I don't know, seven yards, four to six. I don't know how they define mid, to be honest, guys. They are 22nd at negative 9.1. But here's the weird thing about the Giants. They have a really good interior defense at times. They, they really can stand out, man. Dexter Lawrence and those guys can play pretty well. With that said... In short yardage, they're, they're the fourth-ranked defense. So in third and fourth and short, this team can get after you. They're fourth-best DVO-rated defense at 22.6. So it's very much up and down with this team. Let's talk about the way our staff likes to grade people and then filter into, do you attack them through the pass? Do you attack them through the run? So let's talk about above, you know, explosive play rate. So passes, I'm going to define it differently than our coaching staff. Just for clarity, our, our coaching staff ranks that 12 yards or above in terms of the run, and then 25 yards or above in terms of the pass for Gate and the way Gate's going to rank this, the way Gate's going to filter this. I'm doing this runs above 10 yards and passes above 20 yards. I don't know why our coaching staff does the figures that they do. It makes no sense to me, but that's that's how I'm going to do it in comparison to them. So passes above 20 yards. I'm going to say that uh, they got some guys that can play in the secondary, man. Their, their pass defense, it's a little wish-washy. Depending on how you want to filter it, you can get different results. But I'll say overall, this is not this is not a bad pass defense. We have played far worse pass defenses than the Giants. I'm going to be honest. So plays above 20 yards, guys. They've allowed 48 on the season, and that ranks 12. It's in the upper third if we're being real here. And if I filter this a little bit more, and I go to like completion percentage surrendered, so how much like what's how many completions are they giving up? 61.4%, which ranks eighth overall. They're solid, man. Like, they, they can play the pass a little bit, if I'm being honest here. But if you pull back a little bit and you look at total passing yards, they do rank 15th, which is still in the upper half of the league, but you can see that they will give up some, some yardage here. They, they'll definitely get caught. They've given up 3,638 yards passing on the season, which is 15th, which is in the upper half, but towards the back, back of the upper half, if you will. Uh, yards per attempt passing. 13th, so pretty. they're hovering right close to that upper third of the league area at 6.4 yards. In terms of passing attempts, they're pretty balanced in terms of the way teams attack them between the pass and the run. So they rank 18th, which is above the upper half, so they're, they're sliding back towards the back half. But 568, it's still pretty balanced when you look at the running attempts, which is their 19th overall running attempts. But All right, let's take a look a little further into things like passing first downs. I will say that uh, they do give up some first down, guys. They, they definitely do. 200 passing first downs on the season, which ranks tied for 10th overall. 
Uh, that's bad. That's, that's, that's not very good. That means they give up the 10th most passing first downs. And you look at first down percentage. They rank ninth. They give up the ninth most in terms of percentages on first down completions, which is the ninth most, which is, it's not good, right? So, I mean, I will say that I think that their passing defense is better than their run defense. I do think that depending on how you're trying to filter it, it can be pretty good or it can be pretty bad. But nonetheless, like, I would probably say that attacking them through the run is probably a little bit more effective than attacking them through the pass, if I'm being real. So, runs, or let's look at runs above 10 plus yards, where they rank 31st. Horrible, guys. They've given up 79 plays of 10 plus yards, which, like I said, is 31st. is a really, really bad marker. Rushing attempts, they've given up 469 rushing attempts on the season. That's how teams have tried to attack them, which is 19th. Like I said, guys, it's pretty balanced between pass and run, how teams try to actually attack them. Rushing yards surrendered. They've surrendered the six most rushing yards on the season, 2,451st. And then if you look at it in terms of yards per carry, which is probably a better marker, yards per carry, they've given up 5.2 yards, which is tied for 31st. Basically the second worst rushing defense. That's not good, guys. First downs. They've given up 134 rushing first downs, which is very, 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 very bad, guys. It's the fifth most in the league. And if you look at that in terms of percentage, rushing first down percentage is giving up. They're 28.6%, which is the number one or the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. This is a very, 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 very bad run defense. I can't stress this enough. A Nick, <laughs> Shane, listen to me. When you look at this, I'm not saying that they can't be had in the passing game. There, there's some reason to believe you can get them in the passing game. But in terms of their run defense, guys, they are terrible. Terrible, man. <sighs> I'm going to filter a little further, guys, give you a little bit more reason why I'm kind of excited for this to be the Eagles' first matchup. If you look at things like sacks, they can get after the quarterback because Wink Martindale brings a pressure-oriented you know, kind of defense. He's not scared to bring the blitz against you. They have 41 sacks on the season, which ranks 13th. Turnover differential, they're plus three in terms of turnover differential, which ranks 11th, upper third of the league. So they, they can't create things. But I will say, outside of the last game they played Philly, they don't really take the ball away very often through the air. They don't get a lot of interceptions, guys. Only six on the season, which is tied for 32nd overall. They're tied for the absolute worst in terms of creating turnovers through the air. However, in fumbles... We need to be careful, guys. We have, we've put the ball on the ground a couple times, and of lately, that's that's been an issue here. They've created 13 fumbles on the season, which is tied for the second most. So they're not great at playing the ball in the air. They will create fumbles. I will say that uh, it's probably smarter or more prudent to attack them on the ground than it is through the air, but in saying that, they're more likely to create turnovers through fumbles than they are through interceptions. So... It's a little bit back and forth. When we look at total turnover margin, guys, they've created 19 on the season, 13 fumbles, 6 interceptions, which is 25th overall. They don't create a ton of turnovers. They can't get after your quarterback. They can't create sacks. So that's this Giants defense, guys. I got to be real with you. I don't know the complete and utter health of Jalen Hurts. My understanding is, is that, guys, this is more of a pain tolerance thing than a fear of, of recreating the injury, per se, or further extending the injury, if you will. This is more about the toleration of pain for Jalen Hurts. For me, you know, you can't hold the quarterback back, man. If we start Jalen Hurts, we got to have the full disposal of our offense there. This team can be taken in the run game. I, I feel good, man. Just the generalized trend of where we are. You tell me this is our first divisional round opening opponent. I'm telling you that I am confident we can win this football game, guys. In my opinion, this is the opponent you wanted to open up. All right, y'all. I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying you can't lose this game. This is a football game against the ascending football team that is very well coached. Daniel Jones is doing his thing this year. He's been a lot better. He's much improved. They got a very good coaching staff, guys. Brian Dable. Uh, you got to give Brian Dable credit for what he's done with the talent level offensively here, right? Uh, we know the job that Wink Martindale has done defensively with this group. They got some guys coming back that are healthy that we haven't faced yet. So, I mean, you've got to give credit where credit's due there. On top of that, you know, uh, look at the passing game and and what guys like Mike Kafka has done for them offensively as their play caller and, and the way they structure that offense. Mike Kafka has done a heck of a job, right? Uh, Mike Groh, another guy that we're, we're familiar with here. You know, we, we had Groh here. 
Gro is their uh, wide receiver coach, and Gro's done a, a tremendous job with a lot of in and out bodies in the wide receiver room. I mean, they scheme some stuff up for their dudes to, to get receptions. So, can't sleep on this game. We can't take them lightly. They're pretty dang good. But, out of all the opponents in the playoffs, this is definitely the one I want. I'm not going to lie. This is the one I want. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Huh. All right, y'all. Fly Eagles flag. Let's get after it, guys. We got this long break. We got guys coming back healthy ourselves. I think we're going to be the healthiest as we've been in the last few games. So uh, let's go get it, man.